Okay, so we're going to do a little recording here of map prep. So this is level three of the Tomb of Annihilation. Major spoilers if you're playing in this game or if uh, you don't want to have it spoiled for you. Definitely read the module first if you're a DM, um, but this is maybe a good tutorial if you're just learning Roll20 and trying to run an isometric, playing with the dynamic lighting. So I'm going to recreate some of the work that I've already done using some of the art assets so that it goes quicker. But this is a quick run through of how I prepped level three of the Tomb of Annihilation. And so really quickly, if you don't know how to do this, you can take any top down image uh, and you can prep it by clicking on the layer and, and switching it into isometric by transforming it. And up here you can see I'm going to rotate it by uh, 45 degrees and that moves it into this kind of angled view. And then I'm going to uh, kind of commit this uh, rotation. So now when I do further transformations, this is up and this is down as opposed to squishing and squashing it on the angled axis. Now I'm going to transform it again and I'm going to unlink the horizontal and vertical. And I'm going to shrink the vertical, which I guess is here as height, uh, down to 58% of its original. So now it shrank it on this axis instead of the diagonal axis and that's going to work much better. So once I've done that, I've kind of converted the map into an isometric angle, but let's take a look. You know, there are some descriptions in these rooms that, uh, you know, if you take it into isometric, that it's kind of hard to describe it. So examples would be, you know, you can stand outside of here and you can look into these eye slits and see into the room. Well, dynamic lighting will help us with a lot of that. The floor of this room uh, actually has meaningful marked, you know, tiles. And these tiles are big enough that you should be able to figure out the puzzle just without having to go to a handout. Um, there's a sarcophagus in here. There's, you know, this is actually pretty descriptive. This works pretty well, but the, uh, you know, the, uh, the tile floor here is a big puzzle and it's kind of a lame to go to a hand. I think we can probably figure out how to do that on the actual, uh, game map. And there's clues and things you have to look through here and all sorts of stuff. It'd be fun to do in the game. Um, I'm going to show the work that I did. So here's the, the rotated map placed. I don't really need you know, the corners or the height, so this is sort of the the dimensions of the image that I'm going to move into Roll20 when I'm done. And then I started building uh, room by room in layers in Photoshop here. I actually built it in Pixelmator and converted it to Photoshop, and then I got a copy of Photoshop. Pixelmator is a, a cheaper, uh, you know, maybe lighter, lower budget version of Photoshop. Works pretty well. Uh, good alternative if you if you can't drop the money on the big Photoshop license. So here I went and combined pieces of artwork that I got from various Patreons. So this is Epic Isometric, which I really highly recommend. And if I open up these individual layers and kind of show you what I did, these are all visualized, kind of building this out piece by piece. I uh, removed the mask here using the clone stamp tool. So I removed that piece of the door and instead uh, so where's the other part of the door here? Right, so I, I created, it's supposed to be a jackal head. So I just went and found an image off of Google Image Search and replaced it with a jackal head here. And you can see on this image, it, it has uh, some opacity. So I dropped its opacity to 72% so that uh, you can kind of see through it. So if you stand, you can see that uh, the map below, it doesn't block the room in front of it because those two squares are maybe important for the puzzle. Um, I also, built up the walls using some kind of stock stonework walls from Epic Isometric. And I just kind of drop those in uh, as necessary here. And where's the other wall? Here's the other wall. And then I, uh, I dropped in the floor. There's a handout for the floor that's top down. It looks much nicer than the one that's in the map. So if I just do the same isometric transformation and drop it in there, there's the puzzle right there as the people are playing in Roll20. That's going to be great. Then working there's a room here with boar's head there's like a boar's head on the wall and then there's three curtains the problem in isometric is that if i set the dynamic lighting to kind of have a line that's right here the player's going to walk in and they're going to see a wall with a red line on it and i don't know if they're really going to identify that as a curtain uh as something oh what's behind a curtain it's kind of a cinematic thing it's like it's scary to peek behind something it's a lot scarier than if i just pop something out at you you have to make the active choice to go and peek behind the curtain, knowing there might be a Gygaxian death trap behind there. So, uh, one, I found a kind of a 3D render of a boar's head that was, you know, that's isometric enough, and I just put it there. The players will get the idea. And then 
I drew a curtain. I just went and took took uh, you know the mouse and, and just kind of drew these in Photoshop and shaded them in, colored them red, and kind of shaded it in a little bit. And then copied and pasted in that curtain three times. When the players walk in and see that, I'm going to have these curtain layers not baked into the base image of the map. And instead, I'm going to have them as separate layers that I can hide and show. So as they, one by one, reveal, push the curtains away, I'll be able to kind of animate that as I'm playing the game. So that, that's the basics of kind of having layers that are separated out that I can move into the GM layer in Roll20. And, and now I'm going to have to take all these art assets move them into separate PNG files if they're overlays that are going to kind of change throughout gameplay, and then cook all the rest of them into one big JPEG that's compressed down so I don't use too much of my Roll20 space capacity that they give you for, for storage space. So, you know, going and using Photoshop to uh, file, kind of export, um, and, and, and get into the, uh, you know, as you, when you save as, you can save as a JPEG and you can drag that slider down so that the compression is higher and, it, and yeah it won't look as great in roll 20 but you know you're going to be really zoomed in uh you're not looking for detail there a little bit of artifact jpeg compression it, it's fine mm -hmm. all right so here i'm in roll 20 i've got my uh, uh folder of arts art assets and then i've also got my roll 20 screen this is like kind of the finished uh, uh example you can even see there's a there's a monster over here but if i'm gonna start from scratch and i'm gonna create this Here's a new blank canvas here, and I'm going to look at the dynamic lighting settings. So one, the width is appropriate for the size of a canvas that I have. I'm not enabling the grid because Roll20 doesn't do a good job with an isometric grid. I find that I'm just playing gridless. It works just fine. Some of the measurements will be off. You can adjust the scale so that the measuring is approximately correct. But if you're you know, doing a diagonal versus a straight line, it's not going to work in isometric until Roll20 releases an isometric grid. So I have Fog of War turned off, but I have Advanced Fog of War turned on with dim light reveals so that kind of it saves a history of the map as it goes. Um, this is the old dynamic lighting. So we're going to do the old dynamic lighting first in this video. Um, the dynamic lighting here is enabled with enforcing line of sight and update only on drop. And that kind of makes sure that uh, it respects that you know some characters can see, some characters can't see. Uh, there are settings in Roll20 for like only being like facing only to be able to see, but all the characters here in D&D are seen in 360 degrees. But I find that it works when I enforce line of sight and I only update on drop. Uh, and I'm going to restrict movement so that players can't kind of move their mini without dropping it and peek around corners. Yeah, or, you know, kind of walk their character through walls. So only update on drop and restrict movement are settings that I use. So let's move the art and assets over. I've got enough space in Roll20 so that I'll have to remember to go delete some of these assets because I'll have two copies of them if I drag them in multiple times. Well, if I take the base image and I'm going to go to the map layer in Roll20 by hitting the M key, I'm using the advanced shortcuts. And I go to the base image, and I drag this in, it's going to upload this large image, which I'm going to have to go to remember to delete, otherwise I'm going to have multiple copies of it in my account. And I'm really quickly going to go to advanced, and I'm going to say it's a drawing. I don't want it snapping to any grid or anything. If I go to the base image here, and uh, I say, uh, what is this? Uh, let's get info on this guy, and let's say its dimensions are 4365 by 2679. So I'm going to advanced, set the dimensions to 4365 by 2. 2679 so that I'm not shrinking it down. And now it's actually displaying in its native resolution here. And since all these images were grabbed, they will, they'll line up perfectly if I kind of display them in their native resolution. So now I've got two other layers. I've got this, uh, yeah, let's see that, that one goes in well. I've got that guy and I've got uh, the curtains. So the boar's head is cooked into the image map. That's not. So if I go and zoom in a bit, and then over here, these curtains, I'm going to start with the one in the back, copy and paste, and just move multiple copies of these curtains here. And I'll do that. Great. All right, now most of this level is dark, but there are torches mentioned above the sphinxes here. So what I'm quickly going to do is I'm going to go and grab this little torch icon, a little preview of what this is going to look like when it's done. And in here, I'm going to switch to the dynamic lighting layer, and I'm going to drop my torch. 
So the torch is just a token that has dynamic lighting turned on, or pardon me, it's, it's a token that emits light. It's a 40 foot radius, five foot, you know, it starts getting dim after five feet. So it'll show up as like a little glow and all players see the light is really important to do. So this isn't the like dark vision of a token. This is a torch and all the players need to be able to see it. Anybody that has sight will be able to see it. So I'm gonna take this torch, I'm gonna to put it above the Sphinx. It'll put another one above this Sphinx and I click where I want it placed, put another one centered there, another one centered there. But the problem you see is that it's illuminating, you know, in a, in a distance 40 feet out. So it's actually illuminating all the way out to here. To kind of test and see what the characters see, I can actually go and grab a character. I'm gonna grab this character, move it back to my learning ISO layer and I'll paste him in the room. So this character has sight, can see all light, but doesn't emit any himself. So this guy's got dark vision, but uh, let's just turn off his dark vision for now. So he only sees what would be illuminated by a torch. So if I hit control L, it won't hide any of the GM layers. I'll still see all the things the GM can see, but I'll see it with the lighting of this character. So I hit control L and now I can see all of the light. I'm on a Mac keyboard that commands probably a little bit different on a Windows keyboard, but I think it's still control L. So I, I hit control L and I can see those, those four torches are active. If I go and move this to here, right? And then click on the character, you know, I move the torch. I can't see the, the, the icon that's in the dynamic lighting layer, but I can see the effect of its light on the map layer below it and maybe even the token layer. So monsters will be in darkness, but you can see here, the torch here is not, the torch light is not being blocked by the big wall. And so I'm actually illuminating all around here and that's not good. So we're gonna go and we're going to rig the lighting for this room. And then we're gonna get those nice lighting effects. So I'm gonna go to the lighting layer and I'm gonna go and create the, the lighting restrictions. Now I try and make sure there's some headroom so that people's minis can can you know don't get their heads chopped off, but this is a big tall ceiling. So I'm gonna go and create you know the lighting here. And I like doing these angles to the corners so that it, it kind of occludes the corners. Sometimes I go and take uh, in Photoshop and I black out the things here to help hide the secret doors, right? I make sure that everything's black so you can't tell the difference between uh, a, a line that's straight up against the wall and a secret door, but here, let's just do this for now. If I zoom in on that jackal face, I can create, I have to make sure that there's a really clear sort of this working. So I'm going to create the eye slits for the jackal here. And I make sure there's a nice cross to make the math really easy to make sure that there's no leaks inside here. Every time I kind of make sure the dynamic lighting lines are set up, I make sure there's a nice clear cross. So I can really make sure that there's not going to be any leaks of the lighting equation between them. And then let's see, don't really want that there. I'm gonna go and say that yeah, this is like a door. So I'm gonna go and you know, if it's a door, I'm gonna create it in a different color so that it's easy for me to realize, oh, that's something that I'm gonna have to move during the course of play. So I'm gonna go create a door cutting through the center of this. Um, and it's got a crack. So I'll just kind of do that so that you can peek through it, but you can't, uh, you, know, you, 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 can't, uh, you can't see all the way through it. So now moving back to the object layer and scrolling out, if I hit control L on this person, I can see what this person can see, right? And I can see there's, there's not really any light that's emanating through those cracks. So maybe if he uh, turned on a torch or, a, or you know, maybe he's got dark vision as well. So maybe he can see through that darkness. Right, so now he can see through that darkness. He's got some line of sight and can see through there. Now he can, of course, see through walls. So I'm gonna have to rig the, the walls there. So now I just revealed a bunch of stuff he shouldn't be able to see because he can see through walls. So I'll quickly go and reset the fog of war. 
so that he's only ever seen what he's seen. I'll probably have to hit that right before I let the players in the room. All right, so now I've got dynamic lighting. It's really cool. That really looks like a trapped floor. I would recommend the player not move around so glibly, but there you go. All right, so now we've got a room rigged, torches, dark, scary dungeon, uh, isometric, custom art assets dropped in. So it's a little bit more interesting than the top down view if you like playing in isometric. Awesome, thanks.